Okay, so today we are going to start with the new chapter called polymers. Uh, first of all, uh, we will talk about what is the weightage of this chapter. It's around to be five or six mark weightage. Uh, one thing that I really want to tell you about this chapter, this chapter is you have to done it not by logically but by mug up all the kind of a theories that given in this chapter. I mean, yes, uh, you have to memorize all the kind of a things. There is a no kind of a logic and techniques to remind them. Uh, either by writing, either by uh, memorizing them, uh, whatever that you will do, you have to mug up all the kind of uh, things that they gave in this chapter. Okay, so this is the, uh, but the one thing good for this chapter is what? Uh, if you will prepare this chapter according to the board, it is uh, uh, already being completed by you for the uh, JEE and a NEET uh, concept also. Okay, and uh, one thing that I really want to tell you about this that whatever that I give you on this board, you have to write in your textbook uh, notebooks also because whatever the given in your uh, new textbooks uh, arrived like in a, uh, as in a CBSE kind of a books, there are so many uh, things are given in a very very shorter methods. Uh, that is why I gave that all the things on the board that you have to be uh, written in your uh, notebook because uh, they didn't give so many things, but they will ask in JEE. Uh, I showed a number of questions which are not given in a, a textbook, but they will ask. So please be aware of this kind of a things related with the polymers, uh, and uh, you have to be written this all the things in your notebook as well. Okay. So uh, let us going to be starting with our uh, first thing that uh, polymers. I think this word you heard a number of times, but the first time that I think completely uh, with the defined things uh, you completely heard this. Uh, word in the 10th standard where uh, we are just going to be preparing the first polymer by the use of a uh, enumerable uh, ethane molecule converting them into the polythene okay so first of all that the one thing that i really want to tell you uh, we are just going to be starting about the polymers by their definition but before we will move for the polymers uh, that we are going to be uh, having a, some of the introductory part and the uh, some of the uses, uh, what are the application about the polymer. See, uh, we are just going to be addicted with this word. Not just with the word, but this compound, this product, this thing is a really much, really much important thing is in our life. Because a number of times, uh, if we are talking about the, uh, it's a debatable thing about the metal and plastic. That See, first of all, that if I will give you one example of metal, that I have a bucket of metal uh, that is already having a really much amount of weight. And now you are just filling a water. That means you are just going to be carrying the uh, weight of water as well as the weight of your bucket. But that much same size of a bucket of plastic where that you can reduce the really much amount of weight of your bucket. It means that you have to be just carrying only the weight of the water that is present in your bucket. So first of all, that is the really much important property of the plastic, which is just consuming a less amount of weight. Another one thing, it is long lasting. Yes, uh, we are having a metals. Metals are just going to be corroded in a number of ways. Uh, that is going to be just corroded, rusting and so many kind of things that we are having over there. Uh, another one thing, they are also being having a good ductility. Yes, uh, they are uh, another one the properties that they are stretchable by their uh, characteristics so there are so many innumerable kind of applications that we are having uh, related with the polymers a number of ways are being there even in this polymers are also useful in uh, so many big big industries uh, even uh, if we will start from the uh, little thing that uh, we cannot imagine our life uh, without the polymers because uh, if you will start from the brushing our teeth to end it up our uh, day with that uh, whatever the kind of uh, things that you are uh, uh, like chadar and whatever that the things that you are using that is also going to be manufactured by some of the synthetic fibers and those synthetic fibers are also called as an uh, polymers okay so uh, that these are the uh, so many things are related with it but as I uh, as we all know that science is always coming with some of the disuses as well means if science is a blessing for us it is also a curse for us because we all know about that uh, 
the polymers are a, that kind of a substance, that kind of a compound which is ki cannot be degraded by us. It means uh, like there are so many separate ways to degrade it, but it is not going to be degraded because if you are just going to be dumped into the soil, uh, it is uh, it is going to be remaining as it is like for a long, long, long times. It uh, for so many years, if you will just uh, take it outside, it is as it is like that wherever that you are just going to be dumped into that uh, soil. It means it is going to be uh, spreading a really much amount of soil pollution. Uh, other than if you are just going to be throw it in the water means like in a pond like in a uh, sea like in a, a river uh, there, there, there are so many different different kind of uh, creatures which are uh, uh, present in that our sea and ocean and also in a river they are just swallowing the, those kind of a uh, poly bags and all and uh, they will die also so, so it is just going to be uh, uh, spreading a water pollution now that if you are talking about like chalo apne ne burn kare na kaise so if you are just going to be burn it uh, it is going to be spreading up air pollution because there is a number of times those all the polymers are having a carbonic kind of a properties containing compounds it means that if you are just burning them there is a good amount of carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide just going to be uh, mixing with the air and it is going to be uh, making the uh, good amount of pollution good amount of global warming as well so there are so many uh, uh, Disuses of this polymers are also being there. That is why uh, we are just uh, thinking about the plastic-free uh, kind of uh, countries and the uh, pollution-free kind of uh, countries by the uh, avoiding to using this polymers. But as I told you, we cannot imagine our uh, life nowadays without a uh, polymers. But this is all the way that you are uh, really much knowledgeable about the environment and all. But uh, in this chapter, that whatever that we are going to be studied about is so. First of all, that we are going to talk about their definition. Then we will show about their uh, types uh, and their types are just going to be divided in so many so many different different kind of uh, ways other than that if you will show about their uh, we will see uh, around to be I think 19 and more than uh, different different kind of uh, polymers and rubbers are uh, their characteristic uh, their uses and the uh, preparation method of them so we will see in this chapter number of things related with it and yes as uh, again I told you that all the things that you have to be memorized by yourself so let us start with the uh, definition of polymerization okay so first of all that I want to tell you that if you are just going to be prepared the uh, definition of polymerization okay so polymerization is coming with the two different kind of a uh, uh, definition first if you want to know about the polymerization definition you have to be clear about the definition of monomer as well as the definition of polymer so first of all what is the meaning of monomer as a brick is the smallest building block of the building means it's the smallest unit which is repetitively uh, being there and uh, connecting with the each other and make a, a very big house very big home similar kind of a thing that are uh, related with the monomer monomer is nothing but the smallest unit which is repetitively connected with each other and creating a, a polymer okay so those monomers are going to be combining with the covalent bond always reminder this a uh, really much good question it is asked also in a good set that which kind of a bonding being there between the monomers on the preparation of polymer so this is the covalent bond no other bonds are going to be manufacturing between the monomer so this is smaller units are repetitively connecting with each other by the use of covalent bond and make a giant molecule make a huge molecule and that molecule we call as an a polymer so first of all that you have to be clarified about the monomers and also being clarified about the polymer and this whole process we call as an a polymerization means the preparation of polymer is called a polymerization so how you will prepare the polymer by the combination of number of monomers with uh, connecting them with a uh, covalent bonds so monomers yes uh, it is not necessary that uh, all the monomers are going to be similar you can also having a uh, number of types of monomers also being there so another one thing that uh, I just want to tell you about uh, uh, definition of degree of polymerization. Degree of polymerization first of all can be denoted by small n. It is what? It is nothing but the how many number of monomers are present in your polymer that is called a degree of polymerization. Okay, so this is uh, uh, some of the introductory part of our polymer chapter. Okay, so now we are having a two types of a polymer over there, which is totally depending on the degree of 
polymerization it means uh, whatever the number of monomers are present in this manufacturing of polymer see we are having uh, two types if there are uh, less than 25 monomers or, or they, uh, there are greater than 25 monomers if you will finding out uh, a degree of polymerization means the number of monomers are present in the polymer are less than 25 then this kind of polymer is called as an uh, oligomer okay and uh, those which are having a greater than 25 number of uh, monomers they are called as an uh, heavy polymer okay so generally uh, oligomers are present in a liquid state and uh, heavy polymers are present in a solid state now we are having uh, so many different examples with the heavy polymer in this chapter we will see later after the but uh, uh, for the oligomer which is present in a liquid state which is useful in the preparation of fevicol adhesive adhesives like an uh, fevicol we all are uh, knowing about the fevicol another one thing that i want to tell you it is also present in a paints as in a, a one kind of a liquid okay so this is about the oligomer and heavy polymer again i want to tell you it is totally depending on what degree of polymerization it means whatever the number of monomers are present in this kind of polymer either less than 25 or greater than 25 then after we are going to study about the classification of polymer classification of polymer is a depend in a uh, different different kind of a basic things uh, it is uh, divided actually in a four parts like uh, uh, on the basis of their structure on the basis of their where uh, where we will get them uh, on the basis of their uh, which kind of a method that we are using to preparing that means a polymerization method you can call it uh, another one that what are what whatever the kind of intermolecular attraction forces between the monomers so this kind of uh, things are depending on uh, dividing them in a different different kind of a uh, classification and the types of polymers let us going to be see about uh, first of all by the use of a small chart okay so this is the chart that i showed you uh, in a classification of polymer which is divided based on a sources based on a structure based whatever the kind of method that we are using for the polymerization then after the uh, whatever kind of uh, attraction forces between the monomers molecules and the last one that we will study after the completion of all of this uh, based on the growth of polymerization reaction okay so first of all uh, let us going to be see about this uh, one by one first of all that we are having a uh, based on sources sources means uh, wherever that uh, you will get it the polymer so we are having the uh, three types of phenomenon natural synthetic and semi-synthetic so it is a simple by the use of their name you can derive their definition natural means uh, naturally occurs synthetic means uh, a main made kind of a polymer a semi-synthetic means it what uh, where natural and main made both are just going to be combined and will give you the polymer okay so based on structure structure that if you are talking about the structure they are can be divided in three parts you can get a linear kind of structure you can having a branch branch kind of a structure then the cross link is a hybrid version of that linear and branch you can see both of them okay so this is the based on a structure kind of a polymers now that if you are looking for their preparation method of polymers uh, they can be divided in two part addition polymer means you are just going to be added but uh, I think that uh, in ethene, 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 polythene, this kind of example you already did in the 10th standard. Another one that is called a condensation polymers. It is having their own definition. What is the meaning of condensation? That we will see in this chapter. Okay. Uh, now, but uh, addition polymer is also going to be divided in a two part. One is called as a homopolymer where all the monomers are similar. Copolymers. Monomers are going to be different with each other so this is about the methods that we will use for the polymerization on that basis this kind of a criteria you will get now we're talking about the based on molecular forces okay so uh, elastomer kind of a polymers then fibers then the most time this thing you are they will ask the thermosetting polymer and the thermoplastic polymer this is the really much good good distinguents uh, asked for a two mark or a three marks okay so this is about the thermoplastic polymer and the thermosetting polymer so in this chapter we will see about this all the uh, classification one by one deeply uh, by uh, starting with the based on sources Okay, so we will start uh, classification by the based on a sources means uh, wherever 
uh, you will get your polymers where the first type is the natural polymer as I told you those polymers which are naturally occurred you will get from the nature and where uh, will you get from the nature from the plants as well as animals uh, this kind of polymers uh, we call as a uh, natural type of polymers a simple definition by the use of that name you can make a, a definition by yourself as well now uh, it's a time for the examples related with it so I think that number of examples you can see over there which are uh, already present in our body like uh, protein, cellulose, then nucleic acid, then starch these are also present in our animal bodies also uh, this protein and starch and all the kind of things are also possible and available in our body as well another one uh, there are some kind of uh, resins that we are having over there and yes natural uh, rubber I think the method of the collecting the natural rubber that is called as a rubber latex you heard this word a number of time in a 10th standard as well so this is about a uh, uh, first type of uh, classification based on sources which is called as a natural polymer occurring by the nature Okay, so second type of classification based on sources which is a synthetic polymer which is totally opposite than the natural kind of polymer. Okay, so it means that we are having the synthetic polymers. It is also called as a man-made polymers. Why we call this as a man-made polymer? Because even a raw material is not belonging from the naturally occurred polymers. Means that all the things are prepared in a man-made kind of a methods means that is all the things are uh, manufacturing by the industry by the chemical processes it means there is no interference of natural kind of a uh, products or natural kind of a uh, compounds as well this kind of polymers we call as a uh, synthetic or a completely man made uh, polymers okay so they are having the, some of the different different kind of uh, examples like we are having the plastic fibers, synthetic rubbers, if you are talking about the deep examples like synthetic fibers can be divided in two part Buna N and Buna S are the examples of synthetic rubbers which are uh, going to be manufacturing uh, by the complete uh, chemical processes, man-made processes then after if we will talk about the fibers then there are so many different different kind of uh, fibers we have like a terylene, like a polyester, like a orlon uh, orlon, uh, it's a, also called as a polyacrylonitrile pan Okay, so these are all are the manufactured by only and only chemical processes, man-made processes. Another one, plastic, you are having a huge number of polymers which are in a plastic form like a polythene, like a polyvinyl chloride, then you can call it as in a Teflon. There are so many, so many different, different examples that we are having over that okay so it is uh, we call as a synthetic polymers and in this chapter we will study only and only uh, not only but a number of examples related with the synthetic polymers there are several examples only belonging from the natural or biodegradable polymers cause they are only in a less number but this synthetic polymer as I told you in a large series in a large number of polymers that we have here Okay, so we are having a final type of classification uh, based on our sources uh, that is called a semi-synthetic polymers as I told you it is a hybrid version of the natural polymer and the main main polymer means if we are having a, some of the natural polymer which are not appropriate with our so many kind of a uses of requirement and uh, that is why we are just going to be upgrading that natural polymer and to upgrade that natural polymer we have to do some of the chemical reaction on it and we will get uh, some upgrade kind of a polymers this kind of polymer are called as a you know, synthetic polymers which are can be made up by the chemical reaction on the natural polymers okay it means uh, like by changing some of the properties that whatever that we needed we will do some of the processes on that natural polymer and we will get the semi synthetic polymers okay so there are so many different different kind of uh, examples over there like the you can get the explosive cellulose nitrate by the reaction of the cellulose uh, with the the, uh, nitric acid and the sulfuric acid that reaction is called as what nitration process okay so by the nitration you will get a cellulose nitrate another one thing that we are having the natural rubber but you know that natural rubber is not too much tough and ductility and there is a no much stretchability will be there and uh, we cannot make the tires by the use of this natural rubber it is useful in a so many uh, small small kind of uh, or a, a simple simple kind of a uses but if you want to make a, a tire by the use of that rubber so you need a vulcanized rubber and yes that vulcanized rubber can be manufactured by the chemical reaction on a uh, 
natural rubber means by the vulcanization of natural rubber you will get your vulcanized rubber another one example that we are having over there that is a cellulose diacetate rayon it's a one kind of a artificially created woolen either you can also call it as a cotton also being there uh, so that cellulose diacetate yes, reliance company is manufacturing a number of good uh, quality containing rayons which is a main made and uh, natural polymers combining really good example of semi synthetic polymer and which is going to be manufactured by the acetylation reaction of cellulose in a acidic medium will give you the cellulose diacetate so here we completed all of the classification based on the sources where you can uh, see that synthetic polymers then semi synthetic polymer are also being there as a natural polymer again i will say that semi synthetic polymer is nothing but the combining form of what natural polymer and the uh, synthetic polymer so these are the some of the examples are also being given in there and uh, here we completed our lecture uh, <clears throat> and in the next lecture we will study about the some of the other classification okay Madi.